doggies. Those are not doggies. That's why you shouldn't go outside in your nightgown. <laughs> Does she have shoes on? I don't think that's a prom dress. I don't think that's a nightgown. Oh. Well, you shouldn't you sleep be... in that? You shouldn't be out in the woods in your prom dress. Yeah. It snags on things. Maybe ditch the cape thing? I don't know. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> yeah. She, she called up like Uber Slay service. Evidently. I don't think that was composited. I think no. that was the real moon. I'm pretty sure. So, are you ready for like a like a, <laughs> a tourist like a tourist view of uh, the Munich area? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this chapter is. Excellent. So that was a weird scene. That was Ludwig uh, showing up on a sleigh to pick us up while wolves were chasing. Uh, we're chasing Grace and then he turned into a wolf what could this mean gosh I wonder hmm. post is the German word for male also post I'm gonna go with yes hmm. I mean it could be she has something for us oh it's from Gabriel yeah this is from Schattenjäger yeah no, I, I think you... Gabriel is a working partner and... Just Never mind. <laughs> Danke. Does it matter what Frau Vogel thinks about our sex life? Or anything. Or anything else? Yeah. Danke. Bitte. Although she might think your haircut's kind of stupid and she wouldn't be entirely incorrect. I like that haircut. What's wrong with that haircut? It's not, it looks like, it's not symmetric. So we, we know what this says. Gracie, you decided to come over. That's great. Good and tag and all that. I'm sure you and Gertie are hitting it off. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for finding a werewolf book. I'm not sure what it all means, but it might be useful. But Ludwig II, you know, I think you might have something there. Ubergrau says there are two places you should check out. Ludwig had a castle called New Swan something, and there's a museum about him at here in chemistry. Something like that. I really think you should spend some time looking into it. Don't worry. Things are going very smoothly this time around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Attract a suspect to a hunt club run by a man named Von Glauer. He seems okay, but I'm sure there's something going on with at least one of the others. Don't worry, though. I met a police detective named Lieber, so I have backup. I'll be finished soon. Sit tight and enjoy your visit till I get there. Gabriel. What does he think? I'm on vacation here? And no address. Thank you very much, Mr. Knight. Yeah, we saw Gabriel basically think, say that he thought Grace had gone off the deep end, and he was just giving her some activities to do to, to uh, occupy herself so she doesn't get into any trouble. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's got it totally pinned down on who the werewolf is. Hello there, dear. Hi, I'm Grace Nakamura from the castle. Am I interrupting? Heavens, no. Have a seat, Miss Nakamura. Well, I might, <laughs> for a moment. Isn't this nice? We just finished our breakfast. Do you want something? No, thanks. Good for you. I can never turn down food myself. 
<laughs> now you just tell us all about it, sugar she's pie. Fat. These people are very strange. Yeah. Demonologists. You mentioned the other night that you were a demonologist. What is that exactly? Well, it's not what as bad as it, it sounds, honey. What Emily and I really do is to help protect people. Protect them from what? Demons. Well, well do you believe in the devil, Miss Nakamura? I believe in good and evil, if that helps. Oh, but Satan and his demons are real, and they will attack the living. And most folks don't know what to do once they've been attacked. We try to help protect people. <laughs> How can you protect people from demons? The best protection is faith in God, of course. But sometimes faith isn't enough. Sometimes we have to delve into the supernatural in order to protect others. Your shot and joggers are just the same. We are? I mean, he is? Of course! The warriors of light are rare these days, but they do exist all around the globe. That's interesting. I just read about a group called Manos del Sol in Brazil. So the Ritters aren't the only Schottenjägers. Well, they're probably the only ones to use that title. But others have been chosen for the battle. Hmm. So God is not supernatural? Hmm. <laughs> the other night you said something about the Black Wolf. What did you mean? Where did you hear that name? I wasn't the one talking. I don't understand. Quite all right. The point is, it would be a very good idea to answer those questions, and we must work together to do so. Of course I'll help you, Pumpkin. I'd like to know myself, wouldn't I? It isn't every day one's taken over by a disembodied spirit, and I don't much care for it, thank you. You're not talking about a seance, are you? Oh, heavens no. Thank God. Emil's right. I'm much better at tarot cards. I can read for you or for someone else if you prefer. Great. Well. This is extremely helpful, I'm sure. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to do my tarot reading. Don't you worry now. I know what I'm doing. You're dealing cards and making up bullshit about it, I, I think. Isn't that how it usually goes? Push your vital energies into the cards. Um, Is that like a sex thing? <laughs> How do you push your vital <laughs> energy? Like, this Kegel, I guess. Is your soul <laughs> card. That's that which applies to all of your lifetimes. It's the Empress. Oh, that's a good one. That's What's it mean? Good. It means that your soul's journey is one of leadership. There's great strength here and intelligence. This card represents what you're like in this lifetime. It's the chariot, self-discipline, control. You need to feel you have a plan that you're testing your abilities. The chariot's very masculine. In combination with the empress, it tells me that you're currently exploring your male side. Hmm. You will seek out great achievement, but it does have its price. Doesn't sound anything like me. Yes, dear. So doing things third as a woman means you're being a man. The other. Well, yeah. You've pulled the magician. Who is he, dear? Excuse me? Your other, the magician. Oh, this is a very powerful card. Major Arcana. My other? Everyone has an other. Let's see. I bet it's the Schottenjager. What's his name? The Schottenjager? Gabriel Knight. A name of power. Okay. He it's, is powerful, it's a fake this name. one. The magician is dexterous and cunning, mischievous and manipulate. That's Gabriel, all right. And very strong with magical and occult powers. Now, this is interesting because your card, the chariot, is all logic and reasoning, while his, the magician, is spiritual and intuitive. You two are quite a pair. <laughs> she, like, shuffled the this. Or... card shows what you're trying to achieve at this moment your immediate destiny. It's the strength or lust card. Lust? Not that kind of lust, dear. It's a trial card. Finding the strength to continue some difficult journey. It also represents the integration of conflicting energies. That must be your chariot and his magician energies. Mm. Strength also means bonding those energies, loving without judgment, learning yeah. to love the beast. Uh huh. What is this trial, dear? 
Do you know? Werewolves. Um, well... No idea. Gabriel and I are involved with a case right now. Kind of. It will be a hard time. You must let your love give you power. Use the positive energy of your union or you may not succeed. I think you have the wrong idea. Gabriel and I just work together. Yes, dear. But if I might just suggest, when you're facing negative forces, the positive energy of love is a very vital weapon. You make yourself vulnerable when you resist your own tools. Well, that's been helpful. I hope so, dear. Hmm. Yeah, not really. Maybe we should do a reading for Gabriel. Oh, let's! It's a little like spying on someone unawares, but what the heck? Okay, did you shuffle the cards? <sighs> no, because then she wouldn't pull them in the right order. Reach out to the cards and to think about his essence. Okay. Uh, isn't there a thing like where like the cards can be upside down He's and so shit? Hard. Yeah. He's the magician. Okay, now I really yes, got to know dear. whether you shuffle the cards. It reflects your other exact like. <laughs> well, maybe, but I'd rather hold out for David Copperfield. Uh. And his lifetime card? Oh, goodness. The lovers. <laughs> you mean the sole purpose of his life is in his pants? Doesn't surprise me. It's not what you think, dear. It's a duality card. As a lifetime card, it refers to Gabriel's own duality. Good versus evil, physical pleasure versus spiritual growth, that kind of thing. His challenge is to integrate the conflicting parts of himself. Until he does, he'll never find peace. And you will find peace when you acknowledge all of him. I'm not sure about find her accessorizing. Find a way to love the worst as you already love the best. You're really reaching. Mother. His other is the High Priestess. Let me guess. That's me, right? No, dear. It's not. The High Priestess represents psychic mysteries, deep wisdom. This is a very different energy from your earthy one. This must be our connection. To the voice, dear! Someone is trying to communicate with Gabriel. This force is represented by the High Priestess. That's not much help. What about the black wolf? But it is a help, dear. The high priestess is a spiritual guide card if ever there was one. The message must have been a warning. If this force is connected to Gabriel, and if he's so very psychic, then why doesn't it just go to him? Why say it to me? Maybe Gabriel's blocked. Maybe he's purposefully blocking. There is that duality business. Let's go on and see if it becomes clear. The fourth card, remember, represents the current situation. It's death. Oh. Nothing to worry about then. Now you just leave interpretation up to me, sugar pie. It's a transformation card. Dying to one thing and being born to another. It is painful, but it isn't necessarily bad. Two of Wands. Oh, my. What? A two is not good here. Wands is Mars in Aries. That's a war card. In conjunction with the Death card, there are two possible transformations. Two transformations? Yes, dear. Gabriel is waging a spiritual battle. The transformation might be good or evil. This is this a gay thing? That must be the purpose of the High Priestess. She's trying to guide him. So you think he really might be in danger? Oh, yes, dear. Gabriel's very essence is at stake. Hmm. If he takes the wrong path with his powers, Emil and I will stay in town. You must let me know if anything else happens that we can read for clues. Let the Force use you. Are they going to, like, take him to, like, a pray away the gay camp hmm. or something if he decides he wants to? Well, there was, you know, sort of a homoerotic vibe. Uh, Are you sure you don't know of. anything about the black wolf? I never did, dear. I told you. 
Really, you mustn't confuse the vessel with the voice. All I remember was seeing a very bright flash like lightning. Next thing I knew, Emil had me outside. Whatever it was, it was very powerful. Very powerful. Hmm. Do you know anything about King Ludwig II? Sure, we saw his castles, didn't we, Mother? We sure did. Why do you ask? Well, I found a letter in the Schottenegger Library warning Ludwig about the Black Wolf. Who wrote the letter? One of Gabriel's ancestors, a Schottenegger. Hmm. Seems like whoever was using me as a megaphone helped you find that letter. Perhaps you should follow the path something's pointing at. Look into Ludwig. I intend to. Yeah, I was already gonna do I that. I better go. Yeah. Anytime you need us, stop by. And be careful now. Thanks. Well, the game certainly doesn't shy away from espousing Catholicism as like the one true uh, religion. So I guess we're operating under the assumption that Catholicism is real and all of the <laughs> stuff about <clears throat> about you'll go to hell if you're a werewolf and you eat somebody. But I guess you don't go to hell if you don't eat anybody. Hmm. Well, how much choice you have when you're an actual werewolf? I mean, is that a little unfair, maybe? Where's Gerda? Peeling potatoes? I don't think she's pe well. She was peeling potatoes. That's true. There's, or... no, there's no way to rule that out. But I, I didn't see a way to get to the kitchen. Hmm. There's no way to look. Well, she's not we there don't to yell peel at. Potatoes. No. But you might want to ask. I mean, if we're gonna go see Ludwig's castles, mm. then we kind of. I need wish I could read these biographies of Ludwig. Wait a minute. Ludwig the Second, fairy tale king of Bavaria. I didn't see this before. Yep, English. <laughs> so was the book not there, or was Grace really just totally blind? Sometimes it seems like stuff hides. It's a weird puzzle, though. Like, was I supposed to think that she just missed something? Oh, there's the uh, author's information. Ludwig remained throughout his life both very bright and very naive. He was an introvert who seemed to be constantly out of sync with traditional views of rulership, money, and human relationships. The world ever failed to match his ideals. Perhaps this was a fault of his sheltered upbringing as future king. He never was introduced to the real world, and the real world failed to interest him as an adult. In his youth, Ludwig was in fine physical condition and loved to hike alone in the Alps and ride horses. He had a hunting lodge, Shahen, specifically for this purpose. Unfortunately, in 1872, a rather traumatic hunting accident befell the king at Shahen, and his leg was cruelly damaged. He never fully recovered from this incident, and his hiking and riding ceased. His physical health deteriorated from that time on, and explains why he looked so unhealthy in later years. A hunting accident? Or does it? Hmm. Other than his long-standing friendship with the Empress Elizabeth of Austria, and with his mother, the relationships Ludwig attempted with others were nearly always a disappointment for him, and a bewilderment for his partners. He would become obsessed with someone, a singer, an artist, a nobleman or a peasant, and would bombard them with gifts, praise, and favors. When they would fail to return the depths of rapturous passion he required, the singular adoration and humble obedience he expected, he would grow disappointed and cut himself off from them. The objects of his interest were occasionally women, usually ones he fell in love with after seeing them in idealized roles on the stage, but they were more often young men who fit his fantasies of the heroic sagas like Lohengrin and Parsifal that he so loved. Okay, Ludwig was gay. He was a gay man. A good example of the king's obsessive behavior in relationships is the following letter from the Königlich Bayerisch Archives, which this author was privileged to access. It is dated 1864, and it was written by Ludwig's manservant, Paul, to a friend. The king has been in high mood these days. The reason, of course, is a new interest. Thursday last, 
the king attended a performance of Lohengrin in the Wittelsbacher Theater. He came back in a fever, demanding that a man be found. The man, it was gathered, had been sitting in a box across from Ludwig and had drawn the king's attention by his beauty and his deep emotional response to the performance. The king declared that here at last is a sensitive soul. The man was tracked down and brought in for an audience. Upon my word, never have I seen any mind so in line with his majesty's own. They discussed Wagner and France and Byron and all manner of things until long past dawn. The young man, beautiful indeed to look upon, met the king's enthusiasm and knowledge bit for bit. His majesty has been in the thick of it ever since, and while I welcome his good temper, I grow tired of fetching letters back and forth to Louis, so called by his majesty, that should tell you who the young man looks like, at all hours of the night. This author has not been able to learn much about Louis, but he was known to have been a seemingly high-bred foreigner, and he was involved with Ludwig as late as 1880, when he fell into disfavor. The king, especially later in life, felt a great deal of guilt about his sensual nature. His diaries are full of repentant entries begging God for forgiveness and swearing to remain pure. In many of the diary entries, he swears to abstain from sexual relations. The number of these oath entries indicate that Ludwig was not very successful in resisting temptation, yet it is also clear that Ludwig was a God-fearing man and that, though his flesh might occasionally fall, he never surrendered his heart and his conscience to sin. <clears throat> there are a couple of important points to gather from what we just read. The first is that this author was able to um, read Ludwig's diary, and that's not something that is normal. Um, the other thing is that in... Uh, by I the way... I wonder what Gerda's up to. We need to find Gerda now because she has the car keys. Um, and presumably we need to do some fence mending with her mm. at some point. We don't know where she is. We haven't seen her. Um, the other thing is that L Ludwig's diary had a, a bunch of stuff about him being tortured, and it, it's the author's opinion that he's alluding to his homosexuality. But is that is that for sure correct? I think it might not be. Well, what what other temptation could he have been resisting? Yeah, this year. eating I people. I wonder what she's up to. <laughs> Looking at graves. was in love with Wolfgang. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Grace is being really thick. Well, I mean, interpersonal stuff has never really been... I mean, I... Anyway. I sped that up, but you... You need to be nice to Gerda. Not just because she has the car keys, but just because, you know. You should be nice to people. Yeah. Until you have a good reason not to be. I, wh why would it be such a big deal if she was having sex with Gabriel anyway? Mm. But, uh, but, you know, Huber basically told Grace that Gerda had a thing with Wolfgang. Was she honestly not paying attention or? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. It makes the character seem pretty thick. Okay, car. 
carved a whole thing for him. They don't do that so much anymore. Yeah. Sorry, I was an idiot. Yep. Yeah. Gabriel and I, we, we never. I know. It's my fault. Yep. Yep. It's Gabriel's fault. He never tells me anything. Not really. No. I don't know why he didn't want me on this case. You know what happens when you assume. Um, maybe he just. Don't even try to make excuses for him. Um. Still. He's up to his neck in it, I think. Will you help me out with something? Of course. I need some potatoes peeled. <laughs> I have to do some research on Ludwig. I want to go see some of his castles. Take Gabriel's car. There's a map of southern Bavaria in the car. Ludwig's castles are all marked. Thanks. Good luck. sound cut off at that point um so that was a nice little scene and now every every interaction that we'll have with Gerda will be all like ha kind of happy and, you know. well it's forgiving yeah we got all our issues out it only took a day of being like truly terrible to somebody this chapter is it's a it's a really frustrating chapter because it you have to if you don't look at every single thing that the designers wanted you to look at you can't proceed. Ugh. But but the thing is that the castles have a little nooks and crannies and if you if you miss something some of it's not crucial. So this is Neuschwanstein, which. Uh, I guess it was the inspiration for Walt Disney's castles. Our tour begins in the entry hall. Ludwig II lived from 1845 to 1886. He assumed the Bavarian throne at the age of 18 when his father died. Ludwig's passion was building castles. He built three during his lifetime. Linderhof, Herrenchiemsee, and Neuschwanstein. Plans for a fourth castle Falkenstein were underway when he died. In addition to his obsession with building, Ludwig also had a passion for classical heroic German mythology, a taste he shared with the German opera composer Richard Wagner. Neuschwanstein is decorated throughout with themes from these stories, most of which directly relate to Wagner's operas. And another thing is that it's not always clear when the tour tape is going to change. Like if you do a close-up of something, the tour tape, even though you're in the same room, the tour tape will actually say something different. These scenes seem to tell a story, but I have no idea what story. The paintings in this room are from the Siegfried Saga. So I'm not really clear how that's supposed to work. Like you've got a tape, but it, like the tape knows that you These... looked at the thing. Hmm. Anyway, it's... That's that's where I always send these things. The closed it, door leads to the tower, which is not part of the tour. The king was making his way to this very door when he was arrested in 1886. So we're breaking into that, right? I wonder why Ludwig was going to the tower the night he was arrested. Well, obviously we're going to be breaking into that room at some point, but it's it's curious that he was heading there. You are now standing in the king's bedroom. The theme of the bedroom is. Tristan and Isolde, the tragic love story retold in Wagner's opera. 
The opera was given its first performance in Munich in 1865 and a 20-year-old Ludwig attended. This is probably the most elaborate and expensive bedroom ever created. It took 14 woodcarvers four and a half years to create this room. It was this kind of extravagance that bankrupted the king. In the years before his death, he found it increasingly difficult to find money from any source. Hmm. I guess they, he couldn't just mint his own money. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how that worked. He could be like, "I'm the king. I compel thee to carve me some crap." Yeah, for 14 years. Well, Jesus Christ. Can that be right? The richly carved bed, with its canopy, resembles a gothic building in its turrets. The bed's draperies were handmade by dozens of Bavarian seamstresses. Maybe Ludwig thought all this luxury would help him sleep. Did they have running water in 1886? Let's ask the The wash tape. stand actually worked by bringing in water from a stream above the castle. Above the castle? Ludwig sure had a thing for swans. So gravity could like... Yeah, but I, you saw the picture of the castle. It looked like it was pretty far up. Well, Scenes from the opera Tristan and Isolde. What was above the castle? A stream. <laughs> In midair? Maybe. Right. Maybe it was a Roman aqueduct. <laughs> this Probably is not, Ludwig's though. private chapel. The king was a devout Catholic as were all of the Wittelsbacher rulers. They supported the Roman church even when other European countries were dominated by Protestantism. Okay. Yay for it's that. a beautiful crucifix, ivory and gold. And so the tour tape isn't available for all things. The Black Madonna of Altadine. I wonder what her story is all about. Right, like you could easily the paintings miss this. above the altar yeah. depict Saint Louis surrounded by the seraphim. An interesting side note. For a period of about a year, the Louis images in all three castles were ordered to be covered up with black cloth on the unfathomable whim of the king. Okay, that a makes... A king saint? I wonder if Ludwig pictured himself that way. Or maybe he just wanted to be that way. Grace, have a fucking clue. Okay, Seriously. so the letter said that... The stained glass window depicts St. Louis receiving the last sacraments. That the black wolf looked like St. Louis. And that's obviously why after he, after Ludwig had a break with, the, with whoever the black wolf is, he ordered... This is the king's living room. The walls are decorated with scenes from the Lohengrin saga. The king first saw Wagner's opera Lohengrin when he was 16, and it so affected him that he considered it a form of enlightenment. The tragedy of Lohengrin was his essential loneliness. This too was Ludwig's own fate. Ludwig withdrew more and more into his fantasy world of epic heroes and absolute monarchy. An ideal he was determined to create in his castles if he could not have it in his real life. He only wanted to be alone with his dreams, so much so that even his servants were kept at a distance and were not allowed to look at him. What were you afraid they'd see? That he's a werewolf. Yeah, presumably he was changing. I mean, that's, I, I guess it's really just guesswork on our part, but that certainly seems likely. I don't think the guards want to be bothered while on duty. Really? These linens look seriously expensive. They seem And more. seriously old. Close above the chair. I'm surprised people don't sit in these chairs when the guard's not looking. You think maybe that chair's gonna be important later? <laughs> it's a chair, how could it possibly? That's stupid. The miracle of the grail. We don't yet have an idea of how we're gonna dick around with these guards, but we're pretty sure we're going to. Are we going to make somebody sit in a chair? <laughs> Are we going to sit in the chair ourselves? Maybe we'll set the chair on fire. Oh, the that's swan a good motif idea. is featured throughout the castle, but it is particularly prominent in this room. Both the swan and the lily were symbols Ludwig associated with himself. 
they represented his ideals of majesty and purity. The painting behind the swan shows Lohengrin's arrival. More swans. Swans are not nice. Swans and lilies. This is a reproduction of the grotto from the Tannhäuser saga. In such places, Ludwig could pretend he was one of his beloved mythic heroes. As the grotto personifies, the castles were solitary playgrounds built for Ludwig alone. He believed the masses were too coarse to appreciate fine art and he seldom entertained guests. In fact, Ludwig had a standing order that upon his death the castles were to be destroyed. Fortunately, the estate was in such debt that the castles were opened for pain tours only weeks after Ludwig's death. They haven't closed since. It is one of the great ironies of Ludwig's story that the castles that he was thought insane for building are now considered Bavaria's finest treasures. They have paid for their construction many times over. He made tourist traps. Yep. So I don't know why the castles were supposed to be destroyed. I don't know if that's a historical thing or... I guess it's... I can almost picture Ludwig in here. I wonder what he really dreamt about in this room. In, Werewolves. In fact, yeah. In fact, I don't know where they draw the line between fact this and fiction. This is the king's study. Ludwig spent much time at his desk writing letters, drawing up plans for his projects, and studying his favorite authors. He loved poetry, history, and the classics. In later years, he also studied the occult. What affairs of state he did reluctantly attend to were generally attended to alone at his desk in writing. His reluctance to meet with his heads of state and perform the duties of the king were one of the reasons for the charges brought against him in 1886. But Ludwig dreamt of true kingship and a true monarchy, and the small powers left to him after Bavaria succeeded power to Prussia only incited his disdain and frustration. Yeah, so it, it, maybe he really did ha want the, the castles destroyed so that poor people couldn't see them. Spite. Yeah. Because spite. Spite against poor people. The study paintings depict scenes from the Tannhäuser Saga and the Wartburg Castle. I don't know what that... Wartburg Castle? Mm -hmm. What's that? Is that a mythical castle or perhaps a, a real one? Is that an opera? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Well, I wonder why he was studying the occult before he died. Gosh, right. I well, wonder. That's... <laughs> I doubt there's anything left in there now. Besides, the guard would kill me if I touched it. Well, there's a close-up of it, so it's probably important. But Grace won't just go rummaging around in old... This is the final room desks. of our tour, the Singer's Hall. It was modeled after the singer's hall of the Wartburg Castle, where minstrel competitions were held in the 13th century. The hall was built for small private concerts, but Ludwig himself never gave one here. It is said that during the last few years of Wagner's life, he came to Neuschwanstein frequently and performed for the king alone in this room. The hall is probably best known for its enigmatic wolf paintings. The original paintings were from the Parseval saga, but in 1882, Ludwig had them replaced, supplying the description and titles of the new paintings himself. While all the other rooms in the castle show scenes from Wagner's operas, the scenes in this room are not from any opera that anyone can identify. It is yet another of the many mysteries associated with the life of the fairy tale king. So that was the first mention of... Why would Ludwig have wolf paintings in his castle? Yeah, that is... Well, no, that is curious. So, I, I mean, even if he was a werewolf, I mean, he wouldn't... Engelhardt and the blacksmith. Engelhardt and the blacksmith. Um, That's the name of it. Okay. Engelhardt, Hort, Hildegunde. We don't know who those characters are. They don't correspond to any... Oh, right, because they're not... A... The hunters track down Engelhardt and Hildegunde. Yeah. I wonder who the chick is. Hildegunde, yeah, we don't know. The wedding feast of Hildegunde 
and the Baron. The Baron, okay. The death of Engelhart. The death of Engelhart. Engelhart was a human in the one portrait and then a Nice wolf. view of the Alps. In the next. Ludwig's childhood castle, Hohenschwangau, is visible from the lookout in the singer's hall. Okay, so if I didn't click on every single thing that I clicked on there, then we would not be done with this uh, segment. Ever. It's a, yeah.